Hi everyone, my name is Janelle Serio. Welcome to my story poetry presentation. Through Professor Zeller's courses this year and last, I have become very excited about hybrid poetry and the way docu-poetics, collage, erasure, and epistolary poetics can combine to tell stories. And this combination becomes even more intriguing when it stands under the greater umbrella of ekphrasis or ekphrasis. Classically, this is defined as poetry that emerges out of image. Through Minot, I am advocating for the extension of this definition to show that ekphrastic work can emerge from and in conversation with image, story, ekphrastic art, and journalistic style research. By opening ourselves to this broader definition, story layering potential opens wide, and the creative storytelling possibilities become endless. My project, My Not, stands on the influential ekphrastic hybrid poetic scaffolding built by modern poets like Mita Mahato, Ann Carson, and Natasha Trethaway. Mahato's In Between and Ann Carson's H of H playbook show us how visual art can be combined with poetic language to layer dense storylines in very small spaces. And Natasha Trethaway's Baloxophilia shows how carefully wrought epistolary poetry can be generated out of image. This in turn can bring us into communion with the people in the narrative. Poetry created this way feels intimate as though the reader is walking side by side with the people as they move through their stories. My story, My Not, tells the true story of Susanna Miller leaving home after falling out with her mother, Katerina Barrett. All her life, Katerina made it clear to Susanna that she was expected to stay home and be caregiver to younger siblings and eventually to aging parents. After watching her older sister, Christina, marry and begin a family, Susanna became unsatisfied with her mother's plan. In 1931, at 28 years old, Susanna left her family home in Logan Township in South Dakota from Minot, North Dakota, hundreds of miles away, to seek an adult life for herself, leaving younger siblings and parents behind. Susanna was my grandmother. A date in the park, Minot, North Dakota, June of 1934. She had it colorized because it was momentous. Her green cloach matches the jaunty grass, fresh lifting the heaviness of mud after snow her blushing skirt breezes left with a drape that does not come naturally to velvet but this late spring has seen impossible things in white heeled shoes that belie smothering dust a few dozen miles away or winters yet to come this day her waist encircled by the man her mother told her she would never be permitted to meet the quiet man who sat in the back of the baptist church who never sang here now with his paperboy cap and a small chain to tack his dark waistcoat she could feel his fingers lightly holding her waist the tips pressed just so the man's chin creased with anticipation lips pursed as if he would speak if he knew what to say the modest lean of his head matching hers as if meeting part way on an island of stone. Black Sunday, Plain States, Sunday, April the 14th, 1935. Dear Susie, remember when I was small and Papa tied one of the cow's ropes from our house to the outhouse? Just far enough so my feet didn't get frostbit before I shut the door, the door with the crescent, let some of the blizzard in, but that one storm came to the roof drifted the eaves icicles ten feet long thick teddy big and tall couldn't get his hands around them no one could leave the house that week that week papa left the shovel outside that night like this night dirt snow in the crescent grit molars crunch and dirt ears deaf eyes squint blind on our house door barred shut like noah's ark without the God part. Genesis 126, God said, let man have dominion over all the earth and over everything upon the earth. And God said, man had dominion over the earth. Man has dominion over the earth. Man, dominion over earth, dominion over, dominion, 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 
without the God part. Presidential Tally, September the 6th, 1936, Campbell, South Dakota. Drought, grasshoppers, black blizzards, wheat, corn stock, livestock, well water, winter food, homes, men, women, children equals lost. Dear Hilda, baby girl is doing fine. Daughter born to Mr. and Mrs. Wallace Miller in Mandan are the parents of a daughter, September the 4th, Mrs. Miller and daughter were dismissed from the Mandan Hospital and returned to their home Monday. Love, Susie. From Hildegard Barrett, Logan Township, South Dakota, April 1935. Dear Susie, they called us into church today to count us. The Smith girl was found dead 10 feet from her door. They say she lost her way back from the outhouse in the black blizzard. Pastor was sweaty in his suit, and his hair was stuck out in all directions like filth spikes. He says the grasshoppers and the jackrabbits and the heat and the big dust and the lost crops and the buried farms and houses and barns and the sickness are signs of the end times. He says it like he knows, like says we should believe what he says, like if he is right, it makes him a prophet. Ich liebe dich, Hilda, 16 years old. September 1936, Barrett Residence, location unknown. On Susanna Miller, late September 1936, separation by a card table, flimsy, portable legs, toe to toe, dusty brown leathers against white pumps that tread lightly under the new white cotton dress, fresh, freshly stitched and ruffled, her elbow poised in a dainty perch, on the white coverlet far from her sturdy home hundreds of miles away she holds a decision suspended between finger and thumb through glinting round lenses she gazes out the door out of focus wonders if she should resolve if she should turn just left enough to say i am sorry on katarina barrett Late September 1936, separation by a card table, flimsy, portable legs, toe to toe, white pumps against dusty brown, leathers that trod hundreds of dusty miles, reality beneath the white dress, with flowers raised like extravagant, Swiss dot sheer, transparent pride, seated on a borrowed folding chair, the white coverlet table setting, the bud vase glinting vaguely in sun, light filtered by filigree lace curtains, blown in by hot wind. Her hand would be on her hip instead of her lap if she were to stand, if she turned her squared face to her right to ask, who are you to eat my bread? This, I'm gonna break in here because this happened by, by accident. Um, it's a happy accident. Um, I put the paper in the printer the wrong direction, and I was given back an erasure poem by my computer. And this next slide is going to clear it up for you. The two poems together reveal the following. Late September 1936, separation by a card table, flimsy portable legs toe to toe, if she, if she. September the 9th, 1936, duty chooses, expects, shames, guilts, resents, daughter, mother, disappoints, disappoints. Thank you for listening.